In this series, we will discuss mechanical ventilation. In the first part of this series, we will discuss lung mechanics. Here, we will try to understand the process of respiration, important gas laws that govern ventilation, the lung pressures and certain key differences between spontaneous breathing and mechanical ventilation. There are four key steps in respiration. It includes pulmonary ventilation, alveolar gas exchange, systemic gas exchange and gas transport. Pulmonary ventilation involves exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the atmosphere and lung alveoli. Alveolar gas exchange denote the exchange of gases between the lung alveoli and blood vessels. Once the gases are exchanged into the blood vessel, they are transported to the cells to facilitate systemic gas exchange. The carbon dioxide that is released from the cells get transported to the lungs by gas transport. There are four key anatomical structures that we need to understand before we proceed. The chest wall that covers the lung, the lung parenchyma per se, the pleural space that is present between the chest wall and the lung parenchyma and the diaphragm. Next, we need to understand the pressures that are present in each of these components. The pressure which surrounds our body is the atmospheric pressure. The pressure inside the lung parenchyma is called intraalveolar or intrapulmonary pressure. The pressure that exists in the pleural space is the intrapleural pressure. Let us now try to understand each of these pressures in detail. The lung and chest wall cavity exhibit different properties. If we try to remove the lungs from the chest wall, the chest wall has a tendency to expand outwards whereas the lung has a tendency to collapse inwards due to the elastic nature of the lungs. This results in a negative pressure that is gets generated in the intrapleural compartment resulting in a negative intrapleural pressure. The normal atmospheric pressure is 760 mm of mercury. The normal intraalveolar pressure is similar to atmospheric pressure. The intrapleural pressure owing to the dynamics of breathing is negative when compared to intraalveolar pressure. The difference between intraalveolar pressure and intrapleural pressure is called transpulmonary pressure. The difference between intrapleural pressure and atmospheric pressure is called transthoracic pressure. Having understood the lung pressures, let us now look at certain gas laws that govern these lung pressures. The first law is the Boyle's law, which states that at constant temperature, pressure is inversely proportional to volume. If you see the first diagram, we have a cavity with a pressure P1 and a volume of B1. If the piston is moved downwards to compress the gas, it will result in pressure which is higher than before and a volume which is lower than before. But the product of pressure and volume in both these cavities will remain constant. Let us assume that there are two cavities with pressures of P1 and P2. If these two cavities are interconnected and the volumes are altered in such a way that the pressures are different, then air flows from higher pressure to a lower pressure until the pressures equalize. This movement of gas molecules across the pressure gradient is called flow. Thus, we understand that air has to flow from a high pressure to a low pressure area. We also understood that intrapleural pressure is negative. During inspiration, the diaphragm contracts which pushes the abdomen down resulting in increased thoracic volume vertically. Also, the intercostal muscles contract resulting in outward expansion of rib cage and increasing the thoracic volume laterally. This results in more negative intrapleural pressure which results in 
a negative intraalveolar pressure. This pressure gradient causes movement of air from atmosphere into the lungs till the pressure normalizes. Expiration is a passive process occurring due to elastic recoil of lungs. Here, as the diaphragm relaxes and the chest wall relaxes, the intrapleural pressure becomes positive. This results in a positive pressure in the intraalveolar space which results in pushing of gas away from alveoli into the atmosphere. If we try to plot the pressure time scalar during spontaneous breathing, we find that at the time of inspiration, a negative pressure is generated and at the time of expiration, a positive pressure is generated. Thus, a sine waveform is produced during spontaneous breathing. Two important terms that we need to understand before we proceed are compliance and resistance. Compliance is the ease to stretch when a pressure is applied. This can be related to lung parenchyma, chest wall or the surfactant nature. This can be calculated by delta volume by delta pressure. Elasticity on the other hand is the resistance offered to stretch. It is the inverse of compliance. Let us try to understand this further by this illustration. Let us assume that there are two balloons, balloon A with a thin wall and balloon B with a thick wall. If both these balloons are connected to a common source by a Y piece and a constant flow and pressure is applied to the Y piece, We find that balloon A with a thin wall is easy to expand when compared to balloon B. Thus, balloon A is more compliant. When we plot the volume and pressure changes of these two balloons, we find that balloon A is easily expandable when compared to balloon B at similar pressures. Resistance is the force opposing flow of gas. It can be related to airway dimension as well as viscosity of the gas. Resistance is directly proportional to the viscosity and length of the tube and is inversely proportional to fourth power of radius. Having understood how air flows from atmosphere into the alveoli, it is important to understand the factors that determine gas exchange. The five factors which determine gas exchange include Differences in partial pressure, lipid solubility of gases, coordination of blood flow and air flow, diffusion distance and the surface area of alveoli. The first factor is partial pressure of gases. Let us assume that there are two gases which are at different pressures and volumes which are mixed together. Then. The total pressure in a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of individual partial pressures. The clinical application of this law helps us to understand the oxygen cascade. Oxygen as it enters from atmosphere into the alveoli, the partial pressure of oxygen tends to decrease. This difference in partial pressure of oxygen as it travels from room air till the alveoli is governed by alveolar gas equation. It states that partial pressure of alveolar oxygen is equal to partial pressure of inspired oxygen minus partial pressure of alveolar carbon dioxide. Thus, when carbon dioxide increases, oxygen gets displaced. We will discuss more on this in the following lecture. The second factor is the solubility of gases. Henry's law states that the solubility of gas is dependent upon the partial pressure of gas in the air and the solubility coefficient of the gas in the liquid. Carbon dioxide has a partial pressure of 40 at the alveolar end and 45 at the venous end. This difference causes movement of carbon dioxide from blood vessel into alveoli. Similarly, oxygen has a partial pressure of 100 at the level of alveoli and 40 at venous end. Hence, this causes movement of 
oxygen from alveoli into the blood vessel. We need to remember that the carbon dioxide is 24 times as soluble as oxygen and nitrogen is about half as soluble as oxygen. Thus, diffusion of carbon dioxide is faster when compared to oxygen. The third component is ventilation perfusion matching. In a normal alveoli which gets distended in response to flow of gas results in adequate alveolar gas exchange. Abnormalities in this can be a highly distended but not perfused alveoli or a well perfused but not ventilated alveoli. Both these conditions can lead to ventilation perfusion mismatch. We can divide the lung zones into three based on ventilation perfusion. Zone 1 is the topmost zone where the alveolar pressure is more than arterial pressure than venous pressure. Thus, alveolar pressure will compromise blood flow resulting in absent blood flow in this zone. Zone 2 is the middle zone where the perfusion continues intermittently. Here, the arterial pressure is more than alveolar pressure but the venous pressure is less than alveolar pressure. Thus, there is intermittent blood flow in zone 2. Zone 3 is one where arterial pressure and venous pressure are more than alveolar pressure. Here, a continuous blood flow occurs. We need to know that Zone 1 is usually not found in normal conditions. The other factors that determine alveolar gas exchange are diffusion distance and surface area of alveoli. A smaller diffusion distance or a reduced surface area of alveoli can compromise alveolar gas exchange. Let us now try to understand certain basics of mechanical ventilation. Ventilator is a machine that artificially supports patient's breathing either partially or completely. It can be a negative pressure ventilation or a positive pressure ventilation. Positive pressure ventilation can be given non-invasively or invasively. The three common indications for ventilation include inadequate oxygenation, inadequate ventilation, and when the patient is unable to protect his airway. So in a patient with any of these indications, the ventilator is used to support patient's effort till he recovers. Between the ventilator and the patient, an interface is commonly used to deliver this support. The ventilator supports the patient externally till the time he recovers from his disease. The key variables that we need to understand while ventilating a patient are the pressure difference that is produced by the ventilator which causes flow of gas from the ventilator to the patient over a particular period of time which results in volume changes in the patient's lung. In a mechanically ventilated patient during inspiration, air is pushed at a higher pressure into the lungs. This causes positive intra-alveolar pressure. The chest wall and the diaphragm are pushed outwards secondary to the positive intra-alveolar pressure. During expiration, similar to spontaneous breathing, the ventilator reduces the gas flow. This results in air rushing out due to the elastic recoil of lungs. Let us try to understand the pressure time relation as we did in spontaneous breathing. In mechanical ventilation, during inspiration and during expiratory phase, the pressure remains positive throughout the cycle. In summary, spontaneous breathing is one where air is sucked in by negative pressure and in mechanical ventilation, air is pushed in by positive pressure. In lecture 2, we will be discussing setup and checklist to be ensured before starting ventilation. 
this will be followed by a lecture on variables where we will be discussing further on lung mechanics. If you like these videos, please subscribe us and click on the bell icon for new updates.